All right, so we're back with another new Dynamo version. This time it's Dynamo Sandbox and it's at version 2.17. So you can only get it in a core release unless you mess around with a few files you're not supposed to. So in this video, we're going to look at a few of my favorite features for this. We're going to look at dissecting a feature that people have been a little bit confused about on the Dynamo forum. So if you haven't seen it yet, here's the blog post for Dynamo Core 2.17's released. Helena did a really good job documenting all the new features, all that good stuff, where to get it, and they're all detailed very well in here. There are better node recommendations, which is pretty awesome with the node prediction. We can look at that real quick, but one of my favorite features is the ability to insert a graph into your current graph. People on the forum have kind of been like, what's the use case for this if I can just copy and paste? Well, the thing is in Dynamo, you can't have two graphs open at the same time. So this helps with that. I kind of look at it as like a snippet and we'll see why here in a moment. There's also some splash screen stuff that's changed and you can log into Dynamo and Sandbox, which is awesome for package authors and all sorts of other things. So this insert graph feature is my favorite feature and we'll look at that. One other thing in here is this export graph images. It's kind of a preview of something that's not even done yet. I've mentioned this before in other talks, presentations, videos. If you're not already on GitHub, you need to get on there because you can always investigate what's going on on the Dynamo GitHub. This is all public facing stuff. And this release has a feature in here called export graph images, but it's not ready yet. If you're curious what that looks like, you can go into Dynamo's GitHub and see that that could be a view extension that exports your graph image and the geometry and layers them for you. So if you really wanted, you could build this and test it out now on any version of Dynamo if you really wanted, which is really, really cool. Once this is fully out, I'll do a video on it, but it is something that you can see in the public facing GitHub at this moment, which is pretty cool. That's one of the best things about Dynamo is you can see all these things at any time, which is great. So let's go ahead and jump into Revit 23. And I do have Dynamo kind of force loaded on here. Once again, this is a hacky thing to do, but you can force load newer versions of Dynamo if you kind of know how. Um, if you want to know how, I don't know what to tell you other than look in the description of this video and do it at your own risk. I'm coming up! Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. So one of the coolest things here is if you go to create a new file, kind of typical, what we've expected to see from Dynamo all along, kind of what we've always seen. Under the file menu, they have now added the ability to go to an insert command, which is different. That's never been there before. So why would you use this, you might say? So in the data set for this video linked below, we have a few sample files in here. I have a category collector, which is just a simple categories, all elements in category and a watch node. These nodes get used a ton in Dynamo. I use them pretty much every time I'm in Dynamo. Uh, if I could reuse these easily, that would make my job a whole lot easier. Another one in here is a room dictionary to get rooms by a number and rooms by a level. Let's open those real quick just to take a look at them. And we're collecting rooms, filtering out the rooms with no area, getting the number and building a dictionary. I'll link below a video for dictionaries in Dynamo in case they're new to you, but there's something you should be using. I will also take a look at the room dictionary by level. So what this does is very similar, gets all the rooms with an area, gets the level from them, and groups those by level and creates a dictionary to pull them out. So these are singular .dyn Dynamo graphs at this moment. If we go into new, file, insert, we now have the ability to use those in other ways. So let's go ahead and use the category collector first. So without starting a new Dynamo graph, I'm able to insert those right into this, which is pretty sweet. So what's really cool about this, let's do that again. We'll go to new. Let's go ahead and save it just for completeness. So that way it's called sample. We'll go to insert. We'll pick the category collector. And now I have the category collector in here fulfilled and ready to go. Pretty nice because I'm able to use that right away. We can keep on adding to this though, which is really exciting. So if we go to insert, I'm going to go ahead and pick the room dictionary by level. And we now have that graph inserted in here as well. So I kind of consider these snippets so you can save little snippets of Dynamo graphs to reuse. 
which is really sweet. So if we hit run, we've now collected all of our rooms and built a dictionary by level. The way that this works is if we use a levels node, I do level one, we can do dictionary value at key, it takes a dictionary input and it takes a key value. And if we hit run, it might error out because we need to get the level name. So we'll do that right quick as well. And we'll hit run again. So what this does is it collects the rooms based on their level parameter. So we have a multi-tiered list in here. So it's three sub lists for each level. And as you switch this, you can start to collect the different rooms per the level, which is really nice. Dictionaries are great for these kind of things and they speed up your workflows quite a bit, which is awesome. But with those insert from file, we can start to build this stuff out in that way. So if you have a lot of beginner users, you could start to create little chunks of Dynamo graphs that are reusable for them. So with this feature, it's really new. So something to keep in mind is if you were to build out a graph and do a save as of it, and some of the nodes are going to have the same IDs, that's where you'll run into issues. So in this case, I have my collect rooms by level. So I have all my level stuff going on. It's already inserted in my graph. I had completed a save as for the other variant of this for the room number. So if we go ahead and click on room dictionary number, we will get an error message that it failed to insert the file as some of the nodes already exist in this workspace. So that's kind of a bummer because I did a save as just to modify the logic. So I would need to do another save as after a copy and paste. Let's do that real quick just to fix this graph. So what we'll do is we'll open up our number graph. I'm going to do a copy control C. I'll create a new workflow, a new workspace paste them and now we can do a save because those are going to be new IDs and save that over my number graph. We'll jump back into my sample which I also forgot to save and we'll go through those same process. So we'll do the category collector that's inserted in here. We'll insert the level as well. That one's inserted now and we'll also insert the number. And that one's inserted as well. So as you start to interact with this feature, you might run into that error message, but just know that if you did a strict save as without a copy, it's going to have the same node ID. So it's one of those things in the back end that you just kind of need to know happens. And I wanted to make sure you knew that before you start playing with this feature a whole lot. Uh, so there you have it. That's kind of that new feature, insert a graph into a graph. If it was a little confusing on the use case for you, I think it's better to think of it more as like a snippet of a Dynamo graph to be able to reuse this functionality. I, in the future, I would love to see a pane in here, a window that has a bunch of thumbnails of these like quote snippets and you can drag them into your workspace. That'd be really cool. So that might be something that appears in Monocle or I'll add it to their new public roadmap as well. So another thing that I wanna show is if you navigate to the dynamobim.org website, there is a new link for something called a roadmap and they have their full roadmap documented for Dynamo. So you can go in here and vote on ideas, add ideas, all that stuff. So check that out as well. There is a link below. But yeah, one of my favorite features of Dynamo 2.17. That's kind of like a snippet thing. And let me know below what you think is really cool and what you're excited to see in Revit as well. And if you're going to use it. Thanks for checking out this video and we'll see you in the next one.